Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, this morning, I want us to be very brief. And I want us to look into restitution. Touch your neighbor and say restitution. I didn't hear you. Say restitution. Say restitution. Our last message, our message on Sunday, was it? Okay, it's not a teaching. It was not a teaching message, right? It was, uh, okay. So there's nothing to ask questions of the last Sunday message. If there is anything you have done to discover that we taught and you believe there is a place that is K-leg, you want to ask questions. Okay, so let's move on to this restitution. First of all, let's look into what is restitution. What is restitution, church? Who would tell me when you hear the word or English, restitute, restitution, what is restitution? Yes. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. To my own perspective, yes. I believe the restitution is returning back what you have taken. Returning back. I believe in that sentence. Returning back. So uh, the word returning is accepted. Yes, let me hear. Who, who understands what is restitution? Well, you are being asked to restitute. Okay, let, let me move on with this definition. Write down all this. Restitution shows a genuine conversion and a changed heart and a new life. Restitution shows a genuine conversion, a changed heart, and a new life. And again, I can equally use the word restoration, that restitution is a restoration. Take me to Leviticus chapter 6, 1 to 7. Leviticus chapter 6, 1 to 7. Listen carefully so that during question time you will know what to ask me. 6, 1 to 7. Leviticus chapter 6 from verse 1. Yes, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, and the Lord said to Moses, If a person sin and commit a trespass against the Lord by lying, if somebody sin against the Lord by lying, lying to his neighbor about what was delivered to him for uh -huh. safekeeping. Now, whatever that was given to you for you to go and keep, if you lie against it for safekeeping uh -huh. or about a pledge. Or about a robbery. Mm -hmm. Or if he has extorted from his neighbor. If you have taken something. Yes. Or if he has found what was lost and lies concerning it. Mm -hmm. And swear falsely. Mm -hmm. In any one of these, these mm -hmm. things. That a man may do in which he sins. Mm -hmm. Then it shall be. Because he has sinned. And is guilty yes. that he shall restore what he has stolen. I want you to understand, underline the word restore. He shall do what? Restore. restore. That means you shall take it back. Yes, go ahead. All the things which he has extorted uh -huh. or was delivered to him for safekeeping mm -hmm. or the lost thing which he found mm -hmm. or all that about which he has sworn falsely. Mm -hmm. He shall restore its full value. He shall restore its full value. In the principle, which means fully, you will take it back fully. Yes. Add one fit more to it mm -hmm. and give it to whomever it belongs mm -hmm. on the day of his trespasses offering. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. And he shall bring his trespass offering to the Lord a ram without blemish from yes. the flock mm -hmm. with Lord, with your valuation yes. as a trespass offering to the priest. Verse 7. So the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord okay. and he shall be forgiven for any one of these things that he may have done in which he trespasses. Okay, now let's go to the New Testament. Take me to Luke before I talk to my people. Luke 19, 7 to 10. Luke 19 from 7 to 10. Let's see Luke what 19, transpired to, from seven with to Jesus 10. and Zacchaeus. But when they saw it, uh -huh. they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Jesus said, I, I, I want to be. Jesus said, I, I, I want to go to the 
house of this man called Zacchaeus. Yes. Verse 8. Yes. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord. And Zacchaeus stood and said to Jesus. Look Lord. Help. I give half of my goods to the poor. He said all the things I make. Half of them I give it to the poor. Listen. You know there are people. Who believe that when they give to Paul. That their sins has been forgiven. Is that correct? There are people today. That the kind of business they do. After doing that business. They believe that whatsoever. When they share it into the half. And give to the poor. That their sins has been what? You know the Bible said that charity covers multitude of. Eh? So they now believe that when they give to the poor. Less privilege. That their sins has been what? Then if you listen to what Zacchaeus said to Jesus, because people were murmuring, why would Jesus say he's going to the house of this sinner? And the man said to Jesus, every good that I've gotten, I always have for faith, give it to the poor. Now let me hear. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, he said, but if I have taken anything from anyone, with false accusation, I restore fourfold. Did you hear that? He said, whatsoever I have collected, I restitute fourfold. I restore them fourfold. Then immediately Jesus had that. What did he say? And Jesus said to him. And Jesus had this one now. He said something. Today, salvation has come to this house. He said today, in the house of Zacchaeus, salvation has come to that because he also is a son of Abraham. Now hear this. Restitution. Understand this. Restitution is the genuine way of conversion to God. There are differences between repentance and restitution. I want you to take note. Because I want you to ask me what you don't understand in it. Now repentance is that I'm preaching concerning Jesus. You now believe and said from now I will no longer uh, do this evil again. I will no longer carry gun and go to the street and collect people's what? Cards. That is what? Repentance. Repentance means you have changed. If this is where you were looking at when you now look this way, that means you have changed from the angle you were looking to another angle. So, repentance is changing that. Okay, before, I always go to the street and collect people's money. But now, I'm no longer interested in collecting people's money. From today, old things are, new things are, now that is repentance. That repentance is not a guarantee of genuine conversion. Genuine conversion comes to your soul when you have restored that which thou has taken. Zacchaeus said to Jesus, all the people have collected their things. I restore it in how many food? He didn't say one. He said. He didn't say two. He said. He said. He said. In what? Times four. Let, I beg. Let me give. Jesus said. Okay. Now salvation has come. What? To you. Now restitution is restoring that which thou has taken. Now there are many ways of restitution that is very difficult to do. That you must have to learn and you must have to understand. Okay. Let me use for an example. There are so many of you. Maybe some of you here has done that. You went to look for a job. You went to secondary school, but you don't have a certificate. You never wrote for the exams. And they ask you, go and get a certificate. You know in Nigeria, anything can happen. Or in Africa, anything can happen. Or even in the world, anything can happen. You now decided to forge exams and the result. Do you know there are 1,001 people today who is working with their brother's certificate? Is that correct? Now, let me tell you. When you did that and got a job, for instance, let's say you got a job in all your company and they pay you about 250000 You continue earning this money and you're rejoicing that I'm making this money. This money is coming, uh, this money is coming well and God is doing awesome. 
Now, suddenly, at the long run, you heard somebody preaching about Jesus. You now decided to repent and give your life to Christ. Now, let me tell you. After you repented, the next step expected to you as a child of God is to go and do what? Restore. Somebody say restore. Now, if you now, if you are now a new person in Christ, which means if you have now repented and continue walking with a forged result, is that repentance genuine? I don't want to answer me. <laughs> is that repentance genuine? Huh? It's not genuine. Now, for the repentance to be genuine, restitution must take place. And the only way to restitute is one thing. Go to your manager who employed you. Sir, I want to say something to you. You know, I've been working for you for one year. But, uh, you know, that result I brought is not, not my result. So we, we forge it. And after forging it, you give me a job. Now, what you need to do is when you confess to him, now, you have to withdraw that certificate, withdraw from that job, and go back to whoever that forged it to you and say, please, take back your certificate. Take back what belongs to you. You know, you gave it to me. So, from now, I'm no longer working with it. I have given my life to and I've done restitution. Now, if the manager forgives you and reemploy you without that certificate, you are now working genuinely. But when he asks you to go, you need to go. But I discovered a fear of what comes after restitution makes a lot of people who claim to be born again today refuses to restitute. You arrange. They took your next neighbor's car. You say, imagine two of us are living closer. And look at, waiting this woman, they walk, when they drive this kind of car. You arrange with your colleague. You know the time he goes out, when he comes back, you tell them you arrange, they collected the car. Then suddenly you went to a church. Holy Ghost took over you. You now decided to give your life to Christ. Brother, there is something holding you. There is something holding you. You need to go and give that car back to the woman. I know. Some people will say, how will I do that? They will kill me. And that's why there are some restitutions that you need your pastor involved. Go to your pastor. Explain to him. Tell him, sir. Look at what I've done at the past. But I want to return this car to this woman. If your pastor is wise enough, he will lead that trend. In fact, you might not even go the first day. And that's why things you have taken, if you don't restitute it, becomes a problem. That's why making this heaven is very difficult. I was telling somebody the other day that, that there are sins that are more difficult than the other. He was like, what are you talking about? I said, see, if a man go to fornicate with a woman, you're 100% aware that you, you, you sin. Is that correct? And you can easily ask forgiveness of sins. If you can't sleep with a woman now, you know you have sinned. You can go back and lay down and say, God, forgive me. And that thing will be a gun issue. But let me tell you the one that is more dangerous. You came to my house. We are very close. And we share things. But then when I got to your house, I needed, let me use matches. You know, matches is not costly. Then, but you are, you are not on set. But I needed to take it and go. Then I came into your um, kitchen, opened it, and took the matches. Maybe 10 or 15 pieces. And I went back home. Then I started it. Now, because we are close, I didn't discuss it. I don't even care to discuss it because inside of you, you too might not even ask of it. Now, let me tell you. You see that particular scene that you went to take something without the awareness of the owner is stealing. Hello? Now, 
At that particular time, when you collect it, the best thing you would have done is to call on phone and say, I, I came to your place, so I didn't see you. I took matches. And one of the most problems is that when you're taking that matches, you didn't call it anything because anybody can afford matches. Hello? Now you went and kept silent. Now the owner came back and want to start something and started looking for matches. Look for matches, look for matches. He didn't see. Because it's not costly, he sent his boy to go and buy another. Let me tell you. <laughs> That's what I call unknown sin. Even you that sinned never knew. It was what? A sin. Unknown. That's why when you hear me pray, I always say, God forgive me my sin, both known and unknown. Because unknown sin is more deadlier than the known sin. Known sin is, you know you committed it. Inside you, you have asked God forgiveness of sin. You have moved on. But unknown sin is deadly. Deadly. So much deadly. That even inside you, when they say you have, you have you say sin, sin, I didn't sin anything. I've been with the Lord. With the Lord. Another thing that is so common like that is water. You came to somebody's you know that water, anybody can take water and drink. Is that not correct? He is not around that nah, uh, water they hungry. You just went and took the only bottle of water you saw there. You drank. He's your friend now. You left. When your friend came back, he started looking for the water. You know, you see. And there was nobody in that house who said, please, can you give me a cup of water? I know this one sounds so crazy. Some unknown sins are very deadly. It's even better you commit a sin knowing you committed it. Than a sin you did. You didn't even know that it's a sin. You never even believe it's a sin. And on the judgment day, it began to hurt you. You say sin. If I say you steal matches from Sister Kachinian's house. You say steal. Steal me. I'm not a thief. You say my friend. Keep quiet. You're a thief. <laughs> Hallelujah church. Now restitution helps a man. To bring a genuine conversion to yourself. That's why that was a that was teaching this thing somewhere. Somebody asked me, okay, Daddy, how about somebody who shot somebody on the road and killed somebody? How will you go and tell the the family of the disease that you were the one that shot the person? <laughs> now, number one, the major step is for you to believe and give your life to what? Then, the next major thing is for you to go for water baptism. The Bible made it clear. For those who are baptized, will be saved. Those who are not baptized will be what? Condemned. Is that not what the Bible says? So, baptism is very important. So, immediately you are going baptized, then you need to do restitution. There are some churches that do restitution openly. That is dangerous. Restitution shouldn't be openly. If you do restitution openly, people can kill people. There's a big church very close to me that their ministers will do restitution before other ministers. That's equally wrong. Because when you come and stand now, this is ministers, and you say, I, I, want, to, I want to confess, I slept with my neighbor's wife. Your neighbor will stand up. Hey, you do it. <laughs> you do it. Before your neighbor will remember Jesus, where did they preach? You don't they, don't they pour your hot water? Hey, give me my phone. So now the thing where you and my wife they do when I travel. So for knowledge and maturity sake, there's some restitution you do privately. Amen. Because when every soul on earth began to restitute, some of you will say, in fact, in fact, there is no holy person on earth. Because every man born of a woman has a weak point. Everybody. No matter your anointing, no matter who you are, there must be a weak point. You are not God. It's only Jesus that is perfect from one to hundred. Amen? Hallelujah, church. So, restitution is too important in the life of a genuine repented soul. If you have not restored that thing you took, your conversion is not complete. You took a car, return it to who you took it from. 
than if you don't know the person, approach your pastor for an advice of what to do. If you look at where we read from Bible, for Bible uh, reading, when Moses was talking, anything you take, he said it clearly, go and do what? Restitute it, restitute it. When Jesus said, I want to go eat with this man, people say, ah, but that, that man is a very chronic sinner. And when the man said, I've been given to the poor, but anything I've taken from somebody forcefully, he said, I've returned it four times. He said, ah, if you have done that, now salvation has come to your home. Amen. So restitution is very important in the life of a child of God. If you want to be a genuine repentant soul, you must do what? You must do what? Restitution. Amen. 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 No, no, this looks like because of time. If you read First Corinthians chapter six, nine to ten, it talks about fraud. Don't read it because of time. Extortion, fraud, and so many things. All those things. I just speak it just like all our policemen on the street. I don't even know how they can restitute what they've done. It's not a laughing matter. This is not funny. How do we restitute it? I still say, I don't what? I don't what? I don't know. Because those people has collected will die. Because even the things you extorted from people, you need to do what? Restitute. Take me to Romans 14 verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Yes. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. Now, for you to make this heaven, it's not just like a party. But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, you must achieve the rays of righteousness, peace, and the Holy Ghost. And the only way you can do it is when you give your life to Christ, when you believe, let you be baptized. After your baptism, go and restitute that which thou hast taken from anybody by false pretense, by stealing, by lying, by doing all sorts kind of something. Now, there is there is one that is so difficult to restitute that takes the involvement of your pastor, the grace for you to do. And that one is the one I call the restitution of a sin. You sinned against what? The body. Somebody say the body. Somebody say the body. When you are married and you sleep with another woman, that restitution is very difficult to do. You know, some people believe that the restitution alone is only when you have knelt down and do what? Confess to God. The restitution makes it genuine. That your wife should be aware. <laughs> your husband should be aware. Which I know nobody will agree to do. Aware? Nobody. Mama said not true. Nobody will say that one. All right. It's very difficult. But I'm going to tell you one thing. When you need and want to make sure you're going to make heaven, it takes everything about you. To make a genuine repentance. Amen. Amen, church. Amen, church. church, church. So that the race you run will not be in vain. Let me tell you. No matter the money you have here. There is a place we are going. Hello. In our, in our church hymn here. There is a hymn we. Uh, that's him what? Hymn 110. Is that correct? This one is not my home. Oh. I'm just a passing through. Thank you, Lord. My treasures are laid up. Oh, yeah. Somewhere, Somewhere beyond the blue. The angels back on me. Thank you, Lord. From heaven's open door. Oh, yeah. And I can feel the like hope. Oh, 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 oh,
Yes, I am a loving mother, just a big glory. Oh, yes, and I don't expect to stop until I shake my hand. She's waiting now for me in heaven so Oh, yeah. Last verse, oh yeah, just so be glory land, we will live eternal life, oh yes, the sight of every hand, hey, I shout in victory, there are songs of sweetest praise, the power from heaven, oh yeah, Oh, oh, Lord. oh Lord, you know oh, yeah. I am no friend like you. Thank you, Lord. If heaven went on my own, oh, yeah. then love what we don't know. The angels are coming from heaven, open the Amen and amen. Let me say something to you. If any man understand that this world is not your home, if any man understands that you have a race you are running, that means after repentance, you need to go and restore that which you have taken by false pretense. Amen, church. Hallelujah, church. I said you need to restore that which thou hast taken from first what? Preachers. That is why restoration, restitution is so important in the life of every believer. And I, I know as I'm talking, a lot of people's minds are going so many places. That there's some difficult parts in you now that you don't even know how do you restitute from this part. Well, my prayer for you is that the grace of God that will give you the strength and the zeal shall come upon you. For a restitution of genuine conversion that shall position you for making this heaven. And my prayer for you as a child of God is that at the end of the day, heaven lasts in your life. In Jesus' name. If your amen is louder, that prophecy belongs to you. Okay, let me attend to questions if there are any this morning. What are your confusions and your doubts in the spirit concerning restitution? Yes. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah, amen. I want to know if this is the right but let me know it is it just happened to me. Okay. okay. I, I had a business deal with someone. And, uh, you know, the type of business I, I do is that within a few weeks, it will expire. Like when I give you a guarantee, it will expire. But when it happens that I didn't give you a guarantee, and the thing longing, maybe spend like one week or one month or two months with you, and you return it, I decide to consider you just because of the relationship I have with you. And I collected the goods back, tell you that I will sell it. And But before, I will not wait to sell. I will still give you half of that money. Mm -hmm. So we negotiated the price, I have to return back. So on a, at a time, when the person called, he said to me, this and that, and I have not returned, I said, a side person with me, I'm going to do it because of how uh, money is right now. I said, okay, no problem. But I told him, uh, I said I, I will give you like six before, but now it's like I will make it four because of how things is. It's just I wanted to consider that. I'm just considering that the reason why it's, it seems I'm doing it. But had they been disorders, they wouldn't have even collected it. Talk more of that. 
And the man said he needed the money immediately. I said, okay, just give me some time. I'm going to return it. But out of anger, he said that, uh, let keep the goods, keep the money. I don't need it. Uh, let everything be, be left between me and God. And I said, I didn't talk anything. And the man went off on the call. And since then, you've been silent about it? Uh, since then, at a time, there was a time. So I didn't have the contact of the man to call him and return the cash. So what I did was, when I saw that particular desire, uh, I brought out that money we negotiated. I went to my pastor. I said to my pastor, I had a business with this somebody. And uh, this is the amount we negotiated. You, your former pastor? Yes. Okay. My former, yes. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. So then I returned the money to my pastor. I told my pastor that, if, I mean, my former pastor, then that the reason why I'm giving him this money is because I don't want anything because the man said everything. The man said he left everything between me and God. It's for him and it's also for God to see that instead of me to eat his sweat, it's better God eat his sweat. And the pastor collected the money? I think then, I think he collected it. You think? You're not sure? No, he collected it. He collected the money? Yes. And ate the money? I don't know whether he ate the money or he gave it, but I said, I just... That's very wrong. The pastor has done very wrong. The pastor is very, very wrong. Now I hear this. I don't think God will hold anything for you. The reason I said this is this one. You were open to him, the man you did business with. You told him you never had it, but you're going to sell it. Now, things was not working as you said. You equally went back to him and said, I'm going to reduce it like this because it's no longer working. You were very open. Now, out of his own anger and curiosity, he abandoned it for you. Now, the only mistake you made was to take the money to your pastor. You would have only kept that money and have a little patience to see there is a way you would have come across that man. Did you hear me? But after service, you see me, I will advise you on what you will do. If nothing has been done. Because that one you sold to your pastor. You now say, God, take money when you don't give somebody else. That one is not correct. A lot of pastors are pushing us back. From the true understanding. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. And okay. in, in that case, yes. does it mean that does it give me the sagaciousness to still go to uh, you know, to restore the money from the person I give it to? Yes. Okay. If God has blessed you and you see that that money is nothing and you have it now, for, for you not to be blamed at the end of the day, take that money and go and restore back to him. I didn't know the man particularly. You don't know the man? Yes. You know, I come in contact with the different faces. Okay, you can't even recognize the man. I didn't even have his contact. So, how were you talking with him? Because when that you were explaining, you were... That saying, was someone connected it. Even the person that connected it said, you don't know the man, you just, it's a business. The customer, I mean the customer. Hmm. Okay. In this, whenever you come to such kind of situation that is too difficult for you to know. The first movement to do is for you to take your time and seek the face of God. You'll be shocked that somebody of our level of grace can locate the man. Hello? You'll be shocked that somebody of our grace will do what? Locate the man. But after seeking the face and there is no clear message, I think the best option for you to be not to be blamed was to equally to go to your church and talk with your pastor. Any spiritual advice he gives you, as long as it's from God, becomes the best option for you. Then in the sight of God, God has seen that your heart was so clear that it was not your fault that you didn't locate the man. So you are blameless. From the accusation of sin in that particular act. Is that clear to you now? Okay. All right. All right. Next question, please. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, amen. Um, I want to ask this question. Yes. Let's take, for instance, that brother A wanted to sell his car for 1.5 million naira. Mm-hmm. He negotiated with brother B. 
Then Brother B paid the money to Brother A, 1.5 million naira, mm -hmm. and Brother A collected the money. Mm -hmm. But before Brother A was to deliver the car to Brother B the next day, Brother C went and stole the car. Now, it not happened that Brother B... Start up your question again. Okay, let me use names. Okay. Brother John has a car that he wanted to sell to Brother James okay. at 1.5 million naira. Yes. Brother James agreed and transferred the money to Brother John. But before Brother James could come back maybe from abroad to carry the car from John, Brother Jude, a different person, now stole, the, stole car. the car yes. from Brother John. Yes. yes. Now, it's, now, the fight was now between Brother James and Brother John. Or God pay me back my money. After everything, Brother John refunded back the money to Brother James. Now, he has lost the car. I want to ask a question. Yes, sir. In the year that Brother Jude now got repented, the person who stole the car. Yes. And that car is no more 1.5 million naira, but now 15 million naira. And they need to do restitution. Will he go and restitute the car? Or will he restitute the value of that 1.5 million naira? You, will you would have used a land. Because car doesn't, car demolishes land. Appreciate. Okay, now, let me answer this. When you talk about restitution, restitution has to do with the matter of the spirit. Not a physical thing. But you have to do the physical thing because that is where the sin were committed. But restitution has to uh, do with a dealing that confirms a spiritual thing when you finally go to uh, heaven. Amen? Now, hear this. If you stole that money, saw that car for 1.5 million and it's about to be, at the time you now repented, is about 15 million. Now, it is by the understanding of whatsoever that owner of the car accepts. Now, hear this. When I come to you, I stole your car and it was 1.5 million. If God has entered this man who owns that money and he received that 1.5 million, 15 million naira issue will not come up. But if you now, the person who wants to restitute it is somebody who has not given his life to Christ. This is where the issue now becomes a big issue. Because he will now be telling you if that car was banked somewhere, it would have greater to 15 million. At that time, that is when if you have pastor and elder who is knowledgeable, that is the time you get him involved. It is now the time for we to preach to this man and say for this man to return this. A lot of people cannot do this. A lot of people would have gone their way. A lot of people would have done this. Please, let the spirit touch you. And sometimes when the spirit is involved, you will see that the person will collect the 1.5 and forget about the value at that particular time. I don't know if this is clear. More questions here. Yes. Hallelujah, man. That mic is not on. You are living with a child and uh, you saw him with something that you know that is not his own. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, you asked the boy to bring somebody that owns it. Mm -hmm. He said that they, they sold the thing to him. thing to him. Mm -hmm. And he didn't bring the person forward and the boy wants to go back to the east. And how will you do? The, I cannot give him the wristwatch because he didn't it's not his own. It's not his own. Did he tell you who he, he, said bought, he bought it from? He bought it, but bring the person. He couldn't bring to anybody. Now another thing. Number one is this: if he stole it, that is why it should bother you. It should be bothering you. But if he bought it and that particular person have the money to buy it, and what he bought is genuine, it's not a sin. I don't know whether he bought it or not. Okay, now That's you, why I'm worried. Okay, you don't if he bought it or he uh, stole it. This watch is uh, how old is that person? 14 years. This is a tough restitution to discuss. Now hear this. The question is, it won't affect you on the judgment day. You. It is all about him. And what bothers me is that he's a baby. Of 14 years. Now, the question is, what did the baby of 14 do to have the money to buy? So maybe 
he might have stolen it. Or is there anybody that might have dashed him money from the family? Then he decided to buy it. Then if actually he bought it and bought it genuinely, you have nothing to worry. Maybe somebody might have dashed the young boy money. Where you would have been worried is that you knew. You are 100% sure that he stole it. Then we can now look for a way to restore from where he took from. So, but for now, what has played has nothing to do with you in the part of judge on the judgment day in terms of restitution. What will I do with this Okay, now you collected it from him. And since <laughs> mothers, mothers say, mothers say, amen. amen. Okay. Okay. okay, now, anybody that boy was living with, supposed to know if that watch he bought, if that boy has the privilege to make such money. It's a very big risk watch and cannot be bought for 200. So there is every possibility that he stole it. Now, has he told you about the person? Now, the next thing you would have done is to take him to the place he bought it from. Hmm? When you get there, the truth will surely come out. Then from that investigation, then we shall then know the next step to the restitution. Okay, God bless you. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Okay. How about if uh, the person you want to restitute to is dead, yes. you restitute to the family. Now, if that thing has happened and it's depending on what happened, and if it is something financial again, if that person have son or family, you know it's going to be a blessing to them. So go to the family, tell them this is what happened, and you give it to them. But if it is something that involves shedding of blood, do not go alone. Get your pastor, one or two people who are elders to go with you. And that will even make you more uh, a genuine person to them than any other thing. Yes. Is that clear? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, sir. God bless you, sir. Yeah, my name is Kelechi Wansro, okay? Okay. okay. Um, based on the instance you gave, yes. as uh, somebody using a forged certificate, <laughs> buying a work in an oil, can I see those for you? Sure. sure, sure. You know, with time, Maybe the person who built the house, bought, bought the car without yes. money. Yes. Yes. So what will happen to the house and the car? Is okay. it going to re re restore, restore to them. the house and the car? Okay. Or is it still going to own the house and the car? Okay. okay. Based on restitution. Okay. 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 Simple. By the law, and sorry, by the principle of restitution, when you go back to confess to your boss, you employed me with a fake certificate. And I've given my life to Christ. My conscience is not allowing me. Your conscience will not equally allow you to live in that house. Now, the first thing you will do is to take a very serious action, which is telling your boss, will you take back even the house that I bought from the salary you paid me? Which I know if you ask 100 people that question, 90 will say, no. No, yes, sir. Oh. I don't think 90 will say yes. 90 will say no. The only thing is that they will now look at you as, wow. You, in fact, 95% self we want to retain you because they are now seeing a very serious genuineness in you. Eh? Now that boss, I don't believe any boss will say he will collect it. The boss will tell you, I've forgiven you. And immediately he has forgiven you, either he sack you or he returned you, you have done a restitution. Then you go back to the person that forged it and say, please, I beg, take your certificate and not do it again. I'm even resigning from the work. Are you hearing me, sir? But let there be a move to freely from your heart restore. Then if the man now said, okay, no problem, there's no need, I've heard you, my heart is clear with you. So, restitution goes that way. Because immediately he has done it, now automatically the house you live in now, you now see it as a gift from your manager. No longer from the money you earned from a front -end certificate. I don't know if you understand where I'm going. Okay, very clear. 
Yes, sir. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah, man. What if the result is not forged? Maybe it's your late sister or late brother's result you are using. And you are answering her name. Yes, sir. It's forged. That's forged. Oh. I hope you're not doing well. No, no, no. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. There is, there is another. What if you know, according to that result we are talking about, what if you, okay, let me use uh, myself as an example. That when I came to serve Morgan, uh, I came with my, what is the photocopy result of uh, the SS3, that senior wife. So at the time, when he started schooling, because he was uneducated, he didn't finish primary school, talking about secondary school. But I was surprised one day he entered into a in high institution, university. I was like, how did this man now, because he's a Sunday school teacher in my church, then, so I said, how come this man, my mind was, I didn't even think back towards this, uh, my result. But there was a time I needed that result. I began to look for it here and there. I found that result. I couldn't get it. And my, my senses now begin to tell me that it could be that, that, that my result was the result that my guy used to enter the institution. Now, I just say, okay, that's photocopy. I have the original one. And the original one, maybe I've not collected it yet. But maybe when that one will be mostly needed, I can even travel to get it. Now, I know that he did not get that result. He did not forge it from any other place but from me. And that same man is reopened again, even more than me. Uh, should I go to him to collect my result? Or is, uh, should I wait for him to return the result for me? Let me, let me correct an impression. Definition of born again is not gentility. You know, there's somebody that whenever you see him, he's quiet, he's cool. If you talk to him, he'll tell you, God bless you. That's not an evidence of born. It's even better that when you, I'm angry, I will tell you, I'm angry. That when I'm angry, I'll just be looking at, that person can kill you. Hello? So that's not an, so I don't know the, Capacity that made you to say he is a real born again. That's number one. Because even the born again is only him that knows if he's a born again. Sister, even the sister or brother in your side that is sitting, whenever I started singing, you are highly lifted up on God. And he began to cry. <laughs> now lie, now lie, now lie. That is not an evidence of repentance. Cry, tears is not an evidence of being a born again. It's not an evidence of so, 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 so let's that one apart. Two, 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 you are not sure if it is your result. You are only think it might because you are looking for something you couldn't find it. So let's believe that because it's not a fine story anywhere, let's believe that he went to school and you're not aware. And it, but if by eventually by any other means that he didn't go to school, he got admission, that means he bought his certificate, and that is for judge. And anytime before the race of heaven, he has to restitute. The problem is that a lot of churches don't even preach restitution. They make you to understand that immediately you say, Lord, forgive me, they will tell you all things are that new things are. And those are those kind of church that preaches only that it doesn't matter what matters is your my brother. Tell them it matters. If you're a young girl, you wear mini skirt. Leave your leg open. Can't leave your back open. Can't sit down for front. If when I reach three or four, by mistake, my eye go come up from where I'm preaching. I will not be looking something else. If I now want to shout Jesus, I shout to Luau. Something is wrong. That is why that everything matters. Your dressing matters. Your heart matters. Everything about the kingdom to you should do what? So in our church, we don't do only heart matters. We equally do dress matters. Cover up. Dress well. Dress well. Dress well. And the Lord bless you. So because we are not, you're not 100% aware, let's believe that he went to school. But if he doesn't go to school and forge certificate, that is forgery and he must 
Praise the church. Is that clear now? Okay. okay. Yes. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I want to ask questions. Um, let's assume that somebody forged results or one dubious thing or the other. One. Maybe the person did something, you know, dubious to get the money. Okay. Now, on a process of time, things was no longer moving. The money is no longer there. And he, he came to a service like this and such message you are preached. And he decided to give his life to Christ. Now, in that kind of situation, what is the, it doesn't have anything to go and restitute. Normally he has collected something from people that they need to return back. But now there is nothing in his hand to do that in order to clear his part. Now, what now, is he going to do? Now this is where the heart plays and this is where his reconciliation coming. Now you know, after repentance, reconciliation needs to take place, restitution takes place. Now, if there is no money, the truth is, if he knows who he has duped, the first movement is to go and do reconciliation. Then, if his heart is clean and actually genuinely he wants to restore but he has nothing, he will make a move and restore small at least. Hello? You know, spiritual things is, there is a way it works. Because God is watching you, even watching your heart, your mind, how you're going to do it. So when you move and say, let me take the one remaining car, or can take, there's nothing else I have, but I will whenever God provides for me. Even God knows that at that time you have genuinely given your life to Christ. That's why restitution is all about genuine conversion. That's why it is called a genuine conversion. Exactly. All right, sir. I have a second one. Yes. Um, like somebody that went to serve his master. Like you have served like six, seven, eight years. Normally, it's supposed to, maybe the business is a business that you can set up with like a million or thereabouts. Then he set you with something less than that. And you have gotten something from him in this aspect. So, do you need to return back? To yes, that? that particular one, you got it by first pretense. So, you need to restore it. Now, listen. Number one, if actually that your God told you and said, go and sell this. Whatever on top belongs to you, but always return 1,500. And you sell 1,007. It's not a sin. That's business. Is that clear? Where it is a sin is that number one, no instruction was given to you. No agreement. You went and sold. Then you stole out and came and lied to him. I sold so, so thing. Because every genuine God will tell you this thing. Is for 10 million. And now, every boy, boy is supposed to say, but your God, if, as I they do this run, run, and I ask something on it, there's some God that will tell you, do what? Take. It's not a sin. You don't need to restitute anything. That is business. But except that you sold maybe 10 or 11 million. You didn't even tell him. You even removed 1.5 on top. and telling him that was the last price. Because maybe your guy has told you and said, if they no agree for 10 million, you can remove 500. You now say, okay, I can even remove 1.5 and give him 9.5. Then at the end of the day, you need to restitute because you have done what I call stealing by tricks. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. A Yahoo boy who have now known Christ, how will he restitute since he doesn't even know to the way to airport? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But this is one of the biggest questions I was expecting. There's two questions I'm expecting. I've gotten one, remaining one. You know, you need to ask a very deadly one. That is naturally, by natural, by nature, is difficult to restitute. Number one, two things might play. There's some people they dupe, they know. They dupe them. Hmm? It is you who is the duper. Who brings fake identity. But the person you do, you know him. Some majority of the people here who put, uh, men do, they know them. In fact, there's one that came here one time. He brought pictures. He said, I should pray. Need favor. I said, I will pray. What is business? He said, oh, guys, supposed to pay tomorrow. Pay with it. Some of them lives in this street. That's why they stopped coming. That's why they stopped coming. They stopped coming. They stopped coming. I, said, I don't do that kind of prayer here. I don't do that prayer. My friend, get that, get that from me. Some are opposite me here, sir. They bring or you, 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 you,
The picture of the people they brought are the people they actually do. Which means they know you, they know your name, and they know your phone number. So there is every tendency that you know who you duped. So you should go and restore. Now, uh, is that clear? Okay. It's obvious they know whom they duped. But what of somebody who the money he made through duping? The money is no longer there. Say that again. The money he made uh -huh, is through no duping is, is no longer there. Mm -hmm. And he has accepted Christ. He has not been to airport before. How will they do that? Since you need to maybe restore the money back. Number one, if the money is no longer there, my prayer is that his repentance should be genuine. That's number one. Because number one, two is, there are people, their repentance is because of the frustration. If they go back to that particular level they operate financially, you will see that that repentance was not actually genuine. Is that correct? Now, let's talk the two way sides. If that repentance and that restitution he wants to do is genuine and he has given his life genuinely and the thing is no longer there, the first thing he has to do is, hello, Mr. Brian, my name is this person. I was the one that called you and claimed I am so so person and I duped you. Just hold on down off the phone and listen to me. I've given my life to Christ and I'm a, a new person now. But I know I don't live in your country, but I wish to restore whatever I've taken. But everything I made, I invested in with that money has crashed. But God understands this is my heart. Now, this is reconciliation going on. Now, but I want to tell you that for me to be genuine, send me an account that if there is by enemies, God opens a new door for me. I will make something that will convince you that I want to restore. If actually you're doing it with your heart, even God in heaven knows that you are now genuinely converted at that time. What restitution is all about is not that you must get a 10 billion and restore. Immediately you took that action that has made God convinced that you are genuinely converted. You are a born again. Exactly. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Maybe this is the second question you were expecting. <laughs> if it happens that a man marries as many wives as possible, after the first, the second, the third, maybe on the fifth one, and you know, in the process of life, some of them are getting old. He has children, and he now sits under your message, get born again, and decide to restitute. How will you go about it? Did you say if the second, third one has children. All of them have children. children. The last one. And he married them, paid bride price, due process. This was actually the second question I was expecting. Now hear this. Hear this. No matter how many wives you marry, apart from the number one, the number two is concubine, not a wife. So the first mistake is that you're qualifying the second and the third as wife. They are called That's number one. Number two, by the Bible provision of marriage, the Bible says, he that findeth a which is not two. So automatically the first wife you marry and went and paid his bright price is your genuine Every second one that came here, that came after that time, is what? A concubine. Now, look at how you restitute. Immediately the man hears and gives his life to Christ. The genuineness of it is that this is your second wife and third wife and fourth wife has grown old. If you're sending them back to their father's house, you're a winch. Hallelujah. Oh, okay, now woman be winch. He's a wizard. Now, what do you supposed to do? Because you know, in terms of the word marriage, there is no way it could come again because the woman is old. The children has grown big. The only way to settle them is to take the responsibility of your foolishness years ago and get them a house. Keep them there. Make sure you, once in a while, you take care of them like what we call child care. Send money, make sure that they are not hungry. But you and that woman should no longer live in the same roof or by any much have any sexual 
intercourse again. Okay, let me hear you. I want to be around you. Praise the Lord. Uh, 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 okay. okay, wait, it's coming. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, no, if you go to some churches, yes, sir, and you'll be hearing some prayer points that you receive money in your bank account. Mm. So, I want to ask this question. Maybe you're not expecting any money and you get a lot in your, in your account. So, maybe like two, three weeks, the bank did not call you. And later, they later called you to, to return, return the money when you have eaten. It's a, it's it's a general, dangerous one. one. <laughs> wow. wow. This is a good one. This is a good one. Because this thing he said has happened to me. I've gotten a lot of good money. And I keep saying, because if the thing came in church account, I would think, you know, our, our account runs in public, our channel, action.tv. So anybody can pay money. But that one came to my private account. I said, uh, anybody with my private account must know me. And that means the person is supposed to come here. I now have to pause. Let me wait. Now, his question is coming from a spiritual or physical angle. That he went to church. And pastor said you will receive an account. Uh, a lot. So, prophetically he believed. When he got to my lot came. He said, God has answered. And whereby it was a mistake. From somebody. Now, I don't know how to answer this question because number one, you are not saying that God because I'm God no do anything. Even when the prophet or the pastor raised the prayer point, what he's talking about is that favor can come. Not that another person's money that doesn't know you will miss road and come to you. So at that time, if you have spent the money, when bank later trusts you to call you and you know who is the person, you might tell him that out of your belief of your pastor or whatever. You made such mistake. Knowing that it was wrong, that you will do anything you can do as much as possible to restore that which you have taken. If it is genuinely from your heart, God will forgive you. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Daddy, my question is based on the one you just answered okay. concerning marriage. Yes. What what if uh, the man in question that got married to two wives now got born again and became a pastor? Mm. And it happens that he doesn't have money to get a house for the second wife. And it happens that it's the second wife that takes proper care of the man than the first wife. But they are living in the same building, but not in the same room. And they don't have any sexual relationship again. But the wife is still in the same building. Still taking care of the man. Very well. But the man is old. Still taking care of the man, but there is nothing in a relationship, as a sexual relationship between both of them. Is he wrong? The Bible, first of all, said, for the sake of the kingdom, that you will forsake your mother, your father, your own children. So if what it takes for him to become a genuine pastor and make heaven, the first thing that will happen immediately he gets born again is to separate from the concubine, even if she takes care of him. Church, we need to close for today. Okay, let me hear you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, amen. Daddy, my question is, uh, yes. I have uh, an uncle. Yes. Before he settled down for his, the business he's doing now, when he wasn't doing anything, he writes exam for people. Then they will pay him. He writes a uh, wire jam. Then they will give him money. Now that, though he has, I've not seen that uh, he has repented, but... He has found something what that he's doing. If that kind of person repents, does he need to restitute? First of all, the Bible said clearly that the reason why God ended the earth, the time he asked me to go and build an ark, he said the world was what? Corrupt. Full of what? Corruption. That's what the Bible said. And that was why. Now, doing that thing is corruption. You claim your name is 
John Mackay. You went and write exam for John Mackay. Whereby your name is Michael John. Automatically, that is what? Corruption of the highest. First of all, you need to repent and give your life to Christ. Then, in terms of restoring the money you have given, you will even be shocked that the people that gave you the money might not want to collect it. So, since it was, you saw it as a business, not that you went and collected it by force. So, the process of repentance can heal that wound. I don't know if I make a sense. Because somebody came and begged you, please write. He paid. So, naturally, between the both of you, that was business. But in the sight of God, it was corruption. So, that means the only way to heal that one is just to repent and ask God what? Forgiveness. You didn't collect that money by false pretense or by anything. Is that clear? So, when he give his life to Christ, that will heal the one. I don't know if that is okay by you. Very okay. Yes. Okay. Church. Beg, more, more continue next Sunday. <laughs> Shall we rise up on our feet? Shall we rise up on our feet? If you think you're blessed today, jump your hands for this God. Amen.